performing in the movie uh, faces on camera. Yeah, because we do our job, it, it goes, you know, the band comes in mi uh, many, many months later when the film is cut, and they sit there in a, in a recording studio and they look at the footage and they create. Yeah. You know, they create. So I did not. Are you but a Melody Queen Anderson, fan? Oh, I, I, oh, you kidding me? I mean, no. Queen not only complimented the film, it, it brought tremendous value as well. And as some of the younger generation would say, uh, even the, the ones that have not seen Flash Gordon, um, if they're trying to even think of the title, Flash Gordon, they'll refer to it as, you know that movie that Queen did the soundtrack yeah. to? <laughs> kind of cool accent, you know? <laughs> what were you saying about Melanie Anderson? Yeah, no, uh, you know, my leading lady, we're, we're like, we've been brother and sister uh, for all these years. Um, she always put, she brings that before my face all the time that she got to not only meet Queen, yeah. but hang out with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, during the time we were filming in London, yeah. But I did. <laughs> it, it, it is such a defining and cool feature of the film. You know that yeah. the fans don't do that. You know, uh, score an entire film. Yeah. You know, oh, like yeah. the who had done like Tommy, yeah. but that was a very specific thing. You know, so it had to be. What did you, was like the first time you heard the whole thing? Was just like the first time hearing it, I guess, right? Yeah. But, but from a producer's point of view, Dino De Laurentiis. Right. When they when uh, uh, Howard Blake was in charge of music, uh, Howard Blake is won composer. all kinds yeah. of awards. Yeah. Anyway, when Howard Blake brought uh, the idea, the concept of Queen, Dino said, no, that's not, that's not going to work for our movie. And then when he saw the actual screening before it came out to the public, he heard it and he told Howard, this sucks. This is not, not going to work for my movie. And Howard said, it's too late. And so <laughs> during the premiere, uh, Dino went to the premiere, obviously, and when the premiere was over and he heard it, and he, the reaction of the people, some people are led by the reaction of the people of the press. I got it, okay? <laughs> That's what, I mean, anyway, I'll get that some rabbit trail, but um, <laughs> for me, I'm not talking about that. No. But when, when the reception um, of, uh, it, during the, the actual premiere and the public, you know, <laughs> were running up to Queen and Freddie and grabbed them and hugged them and said, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> but he had to wait for the reaction of everybody else. Well, played into the, you know, they, they played it seriously, but it also played into the, the campiness of the movie, you know, like, uh -huh. my gosh, the Flash song is <laughs> so amazing and so iconic now, you know. <laughs> we've, we were doing this while it's done. We did a documentary, uh, a UK film crew came to me three years ago and said, hey, we want to uh, we want to do your life story. I said, well, wait a minute. At that time, I was 50, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, well, I was, I was 60, I'm 63 now. I said, my life story, I said, wait a minute, time out, I have a whole lot of life left. <laughs> it was kind of disconcerting when you hear that. But anyway, they said, no, we just want to, uh, we want to just interview everybody, you, your family, the fans, other directors, everybody uh, we can on uh, two questions. What impact did the character from the 30s, Flash Gordon, have on you growing up? And what impact did Sam Jones in the movie have on you growing up? And uh, what's really cool about that, all these, some of these questions you're asking now are answered in these interviews. They interview Brian May. He talks in this movie, Life After Flash, which hopefully will be out very soon. Uh, Brian May talks about that, how Freddie hated to sing those high notes and, <laughs> and how, he, how Brian forced him to do it and look what happened. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. uh, and just uh, all these stories, the inside on what really took place. But for me, uh, this movie, this documentary, feature documentary turned out to be, for me, uh, it's raw, it's transparent, and it's very impactful to who watches it. Um, sort of the, the do's and don'ts of life for me. You know, again, going back to Proverbs, that's what I bring forth in the movie. If you choose this way, this is what I chose, it was wrong, and look at the consequences I put myself and my family through for <laughs> a number of years. Uh, <laughs> A little bit of suffering due due to my wrong choices, and then the other practical thinking, common sense choices. But yeah, when you, when you see this movie, Life After Flash, you're going to see all these inside stories. It's yeah. wonderful. That's awesome. That's, yeah. I'm excited for that to come out because there are so many. That's what you know. In adding to the cult status of the film, not only is the film itself, but all I feel like there is a lot of like behind the scenes production type things that happen. You know, with like. You know, actors, or you know, like you getting the part, you know, over certain people, and yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Which you know, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was my Marine Corps training, but I, when I went to Hollywood, Mike, I never thought when I walked into a room of other actors my age, 
I, I never thought of it as my competition. Yeah. I mean, if they didn't have football pads on or whatever, I didn't think of it as competition. <laughs> I just thought, okay, they either want Sam Jones or they want somebody else. Right. I never thought my job was to go into that room and just be the guy and not try to be somebody else. So, uh, and that worked a lot for me in the early years. And then we're talking about uh, be, uh, being influenced by other voices uh, or you know, being impressionable by. For me, my, uh, I became tainted, I think. <laughs> so I never become tainted because you, I kind of lost that freshness about me and that naivete. But I, I started reading my own press. Well, if you're gonna read your own press, what does that mean? That means I, I started to, to fought if they wrote good about me, yeah. Well, what happens when they started writing ne negative articles? Am I to follow that? Am I to believe that? So I started doing that and that, that got me, uh, yeah, that, you know, that, I had those six month lulls in my career, yeah, you know, yeah. where, waiting by the phone to ring and, and all that. But yeah, so uh, my advice to a lot of people is just don't worry about what the press says. Don't be, don't be moved, especially by public opinion if you feel, this is your God-given skill set and talent, and keep going forward. But don't change your attitude, uh, yeah. so, or, or you'll be humble. I mean, you will get a, a few seasons of great success, but when it falls, if arrogance or pride gets in the way, when you fall, you fall abruptly, <laughs> <laughs> and the bottom falls out. So, uh, yeah, that happened to me once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to hear that story. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Hey. Hello. Um, have you heard of the uh, Batman cartoons that have released on Blu-ray with uh, Adam West, where he does the classic Batmans? Would you be interested in doing something like that with, as Flash with well, the series? Well, of course. What was he doing specifically? Uh, voiceovers or yeah, or? voiceovers. Oh yeah, well yeah, of course. I mean, I'm I'm excited. Hopefully, uh, you know, j just like the Seth MacFarlane story. For those who didn't hear that, uh, you know, he when he was eight years old, he saw Flash Gordon and changed his life. I got a call seven years ago from a decision maker in Hollywood, that would be Seth MacFarlane. So, uh, you know, um, so why did I say that? Um, same scenario with Fox Studios, Matthew Riley. Uh, same age, Saul Flash Gordon. He grew up to be a decision maker at Fox. He acquired the screenplay rights for the next Flash Gordon sequel. Well, that's a sensitive uh, vernacular. Their crea creators are very sensitive about what we're going to call their next project. Is it a reboot? Is it a sequel? Anyway, uh, so that's my point. Um, so it's been sitting at Fox for three years with some reputable people, and hopefully it goes. I met with Matthew, and, and hopefully it happens. I'm, I'm excited about it, really. And, and uh, yeah, yeah I, I just don't know any more details except that John Davis, if you Google John Davis, extremely reputable, seasoned, proven producer, and he's attached to. Uh, uh, the next Flash Gordon. Yeah, it's got to be cool to see that. Uh, sorry, did you have a call? No, just said thank you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah thanks. Of it's got to be cool to see that uh, <laughs> that new generation, you know, picking up. You know, again, it started started with Ted, but you know, it's been been uh, you know iconic film for so long, and then to have that come back, as, you know, in Ted. How did that feel to sort of you know be playing yourself? <laughs> well, that's uh, the that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he asked me to play myself. <laughs> uh, you know, how do you do that? Um, right. Well, when I read the script, I said, Seth, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out here, buddy, whoa. <laughs> um, because, uh, I forgot to say, the initial phone call from Seth, uh, when he said that it, uh, watching Flash Court at the age of eight, he said it, uh, um, it changed his life. I said, how did it change your life? He said, uh, well, I knew when I walked out of the movie theater that uh, I wanted to be a creative type guy. So my reply was, well, you became creative, but I hope I had... You all, I said, you also became perverted. I hope I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> so when I read the script, you know, I like what he said about playing yourself. Yeah, well, I said, Seth, this really, I mean, it's pieces and parts of me, but it's not like me right now. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there's a young generation out there, part of my uh, fan base. I said, I gotta be really selective about it. Some of this stuff, but yeah, did I party in the '80s? Yeah, I didn't do a lot of that stuff. But uh, so we, you know, we had to revise a lot of stuff. You know, especially you had a, the studio. I think it initially wrote a three-page monologue I was supposed to say on film about the benefits of doing 
every type of narcotic you could possibly think of, wow. and some that aren't even invented yet. <laughs> and I said, I can't do that. I just can't do that anyway. So we, yeah. <laughs> well, it was a lot of fun uh, to watch. And you mentioned uh, the possibilities of a sequel or a reboot or whatever. But you said that they acquired the rights. Was were were there scripts planned um, back in the day for Flash? Well, yeah. Original? When I, I signed in '79 the contract, and it was for six, so five sequels. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, the industry's. Uh, I, I I don't have the answers. All I know is here's the deal. You know, here's the deal for us actors, and I'm sure for a lot of creative people in the movie business. When you are hired, number one, it is a blessing. Number two, if your project does well at the box office, it's a bigger blessing. Yeah. Number three, when there's any longevity attached to it, I mean, here we are talking because 38 years ago, <laughs> I filmed Flash Gordon. Yeah. That's even a bigger blessing. So all this other stuff about why we didn't do the sequels, why it didn't do well in America at box office until it, uh, it did well in every other country. Um, why this, why nine of my TV series, only one got picked up. I mean, it goes on and on, you know, and there's, there's uh, thousands of stories like this. So rather than try to brainstorm and figure out the formula, I don't really believe there is any formula. All I know is it's, it's a blessing to work in this business and you better be, um, you better be trained up uh, in protecting that provision if it's a secondary job or investments and you better be prayed up about the bit people ask me what's the edge for you what's the i said other than training and being the very best i can i i, I pray i ask for god's blessing i mean why is he going to trust me with any type of success that anything i put my hand to unless um you know unless i have a platform to give him the credit and uh receive this incredible blessing and provision yeah. you know because, um, you know, a lot of it is sort of wasted. And I know I sort of wasted some of it in the early years. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, there's no formula on oh, if you do it this way. I mean, there, there's great successful directors. There's a great documentary on Sp uh, Steven Spielberg. I don't know the name of it because I, I came into it partway. But it's incredible. If anybody knows that name. Yeah, the recent one, right? Uh, yeah, well, what's it called? Spielberg. Yeah, there you go. I mean, all I know is I'm, I turn on the TV and there he is. He's on camera. And he talked about in his early years. What a great, if there's any type of formula here, he, in his early 20s with four or five other iconic directors, they were buddies and they hung out together. And they just didn't pat each other on the back and say how great they were. They were saying, no, Stephen, you're wrong about this. Let me give you some advice. It was Brian De Palma, Francis Ford Coppola, who, um, George Lucas, you know what they told George, you know what uh, I think Brian, Brian Obama told George Lucas when he showed him a little bit of a rough uh, cut screening of Star Wars? He, yeah, he said, what are you doing? What are you doing, uh, George? We don't know what the hell that is. It's so confusing. And, and De Palma said, uh, Spielberg, why don't you do this? You know, come on in the credits in the beginning. Tell the people a little history about what you're doing here. Hello, the opening credits, all right. And that's help because he had buddies. Or so if there's any good formula about really uh, covering all bases other than prayer about success, is have a group of people around you yeah. that are not just telling you how great you are, but saying no. You need to Sam. You need to re reevaluate your thinking, and you need to do it. Maybe try it this way. Well, that's what he did. And, and the other side of Spielberg's story, it's which I didn't know. The fascinating part was that every movie he did, most every movie, if you saw the documentary, uh, he, it was always about the human condition. He, whether it was an alien or what, because he was putting on, his story was his real life situation from his dysfunctional family life. Really fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So he had people around him uh, when he got in his early 20s to, uh, so that's what we need. You know, even my circle of friends right now is very, there's maybe two of them, you know, two guys that Tell me, Sam, knock off the nonsense and the baby talk and reevaluate your thinking. That's what we need to hear. And of course, I got my wife. She just said, you know, it's funny. Uh, people ask me all the time when I come back from making a movie or doing the comic cons. I, I walk in the house. Well, what did your wife say? She says, okay, big movie star, that life's over. Now take out the freaking garbage. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that's that's it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. You need people to set you straight. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Hey. Hi. Yeah. Flash Gordon, your Flash Gordon was the first VHS tape I bought. Oh, yeah. And I had read the comics and I had seen the old 30s and the 50s reel, and your Flash Gordon was my favorite. Well, thank you. Here's a question I've wanted to know since then. After the movie, did he go back and decide to go back and play football? Was he halftime <laughs> saving the galaxy Funny. for everybody? Wow. <laughs> That's really cool. No, I, I'm, I'm not being funny. No, you should put that on paper or email it to, I'm serious. That's, um, I don't know. You're talking about the sequel, obviously, right? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, did he go, I asked my mom, did he go and play football now? Did he just go back to his job? Wow. Well, I don't know. He may still be gallivanting across the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I need to know. Depends on if he I need to know as well, okay? <laughs> That's, no, seriously. I, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about what's next for it, and hopefully it happens. Um, I just hope that they're, that, that they're um, what's that carpentry phase, uh, being loyal to the inherent characteristics of the wood, whatever. Yeah, I hope they're loyal, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope they're, they're loyal to the, the character. Uh, you know, and Flash Gordon's old fashioned, you know? Good is good. Mm -hmm. It's not mixed up, you know. This good is not bad, and bad's not good. You know, it's uh, it's real uh, practical thinking. There's no confusion, and hopefully, um, and also he's not, you know, he doesn't have the superpowers. He's yeah. he relies on his wit and his athleticism. So, uh, and hopefully, that's what they do. I mean, that's um, and then of course, yeah. So you got to bring it, and I understand, you know, open mindedness. You got to bring it down to this day and age. But I think a lot of, uh, especially the American audience, is starting to appreciate that natural, raw concept. Let's not get too outside the realm. Let's just keep it practical, common sense. But yeah, you know, I mean, you gotta, you, you gotta have conflict and, and you gotta, I just wanna be on the edge of, when I, when I go to see a movie, I'm not allowed to go to the movie theater anymore, by the way. That's why I have to watch it on Netflix. Yeah, my wife doesn't allow me to go. <laughs> because when I go, uh, to the movie theater to watch the movie to uh, where I'm able to hear the dialogue not people munching in my ear with their sandwiches they brought in tinfoil from their home because I'm the only guy in the theater will say excuse me can you eat a little quieter please <laughs> so of course you know that's that yeah I did that you, on the edge of your seat <laughs> you know, I mean, okay you want to look Eat as loud as you want to eat when the battle scenes are happening and the explosions are happening. Am I right? What are you talking? Wait a minute. But now, there, there, there's the, 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 this, this moment, this sensitive moment we're about to hear an important moment in the movie. And it's, they're, they're soft spoken. We need to hear that new information. But when I can't hear it, yeah, last time I went, my wife said, You're not going ever again. <laughs> last time I went, there was a family of, oh, wow. The mom, the dad, and I think three teenagers. And one of the daughters was about 17, and and he heard that. And, and, and the hearers were getting this sensitive, very important information. Yeah. And all, all of a sudden, you hear, you hear. Is that it? Yeah. You, you hear. <laughs> <laughs> right in my ear. So I turn around. I said, "Can you please eat a little quieter?" And all of a sudden, you heard a pin drop. And of course, it's a little bit louder than that, right? And then. And remember, the, uh, and it was a teenage daughter who was doing it with her mom, dad. And all of a sudden, there's a long beat. There's no reply. And then you hear the teenage girl say, Daddy, was that man talking to me? <laughs> and then you heard another beat. He didn't reply. And I turned and I said, yes, that was me, young lady. <laughs> so I'm barred from all movie theaters all over the world. I want to take you to every movie. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I have three sons and, and two daughters. And, a lot of grandkids and yeah. come on <laughs> let's be kid let's not think about me and by the way i don't have to you know but i, I like i like to, to play out the scenario but you know when you're in your seat so in other words if you're sitting here and i'm sitting behind you your head is right here my food is right here <laughs> so you can't if there's no way to avoid it i just wish that people fine bring your own food from home bring it 
But do you really have to pack it in tin foil? <laughs> okay, let's say you do. Can you just open the tin foil one motion, one time, throw it away? But why do you sit there through the whole movie and open the tin foil every time you want to bite it? You see that? You see that? A real passion. Yeah, no, it's a uh... No, but come on, it's common sense thinking, guys. <laughs> this is kind of, this is not brainstorming anything. It just Stop thinking of yourself. Yeah. Come on. Well, that's what it is. That's what it's all about. You know, yeah. people just put themselves in their own bubble. And, I, and I'm, I'm confused about the family that just paid what in L.A. I mean, I'm in San Diego. <laughs> it's 15 bucks a pop now yeah. at an arc light or an AMC with the recliners. So 15 times five. What's the math on that? 75. And that's just to get in the door. That's nothing to do with concession. Well, they, they spend a lot of money. <laughs> well, yeah, she had them. They had other bucket, yeah. buckets of popcorn, etc., yeah. etc. <laughs> They paid over 100, 125, 150, oh, yes. and they're they're disturbing themselves as well. I I, I don't I don't understand that. <laughs> That's the Marine Corps in me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Super fun. Yeah. Did you? Super fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. Has there ever been a modern mo uh, movie lately that you wanted to be in? that you wish you had tried out for? Oh, God. So, you know, I, 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 I wanted to be in the Expendables. Matter of fact, we were yeah. we were renting uh, Ted 2. When we were filming Ted 2, I found out that um, production called me, and they said, oh, we want to use some of your, uh, you know, your personal flash cord memorabilia, posters that were framed and action figures. We want to put that in your house, you know, and uh, we want you to drop it off at the production, at the office. And I said, oh, you know, I know the studio, but I said, where's the office? They said, oh, it's here and here. And as I walk in, I see a, a big statue of uh, uh, Stallone. And then uh, I asked the secretary, I said, they said, yeah, this is uh, Stallone's office. I said, so we're renting Stallone's offices, part of his offices, for Ted 2 uh, production. So, um, so as I'm, un I'm unloading stuff, she said, you can't park there. I said, why? She said, that's uh, uh, Mr. Stallone's parking space. <laughs> I said, I said, when does he do back? She said, any minute. I said, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> so I auditioned for Sly probably twice over the years when he, I think Cobra, when he did Cobra, yeah. he was producing too. I think, yeah. he, I don't know if he directed. But anyway, um, so I wait. I mean, I moved my car, and all of a sudden, I, he comes in, and and, uh, and uh, I said, what do you need, you know? <laughs> he goes, oh, yeah, dude, I want a bunch of those posters. Uh, that I got extra posters on it. Signed for you and your kids and your family members, and I did that. He says, well, what can I do for you? I said, well, not much. Just give me... Uh, uh, just, you know, three sequels to, to The Expendables. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I did my solicitation to him. He looked at me and he, was, and he told me, I think that was the, it was a couple years ago. So that's when he said, Sam, we're having such a problem because China just, uh, what was it, but pirating all the DVDs and stuff like that. So he had a bad taste. And, yeah. and, and I think shortly after that, something happened and he decided to do, was it the part three? Because this was during Ted 2, the making of it. So couple years ago but yeah so yeah I would like to do uh, an Expendables type thing yeah. but because my buddy uh, I call him my buddy but uh, Dolph Lundgren who you know some people get me mixed up with him <laughs> and this is the God's truth I've actually signed his autograph three times <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not making this up when a, when, when a group of ladies three sep three different groups three separate times you don't argue with a group of ladies first of all you don't argue with one woman okay <laughs> And I'm, I'm in Sweden, and I'm in uh, Las Vegas, and I'm in somewhere in California, and the same. hey, Dolph, man, we, can we have your autograph? And I would explain to them, seriously, I'm Sam Jones, you know, I play Flash Court, I'm not, stop being a spoiled celebrity and just sign this, Dolph. I said, okay, <laughs> no, 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 but I, I made it kind of sloppy so it wouldn't be, yeah. you know, so it wouldn't be a lawsuit, you know, <laughs> plagiarism or whatever, you right. know, yeah. Yeah, forgery, thank you. <laughs> What's that? Mistaken identity. Yeah, I actually emailed his manager because you go on IMDB for contact info. And, you know, and I, 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 MDB, I, I, I sent them an email and I said, look, you know, I told them the same story I just told you. But I said, just to make sure you, you don't think that I'm, you know, forging or whatever, you know, there'd be a liability issue. I said, I, you know, I, I didn't do it very legible. Yeah. I never heard from him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> never. But I'm actually um, doing, I don't know if it's, uh, I think it's Rhode Island Comic Con next month, and actually Dolph is appearing. 
because I do owe him an apology. I do owe him an apology. Uh, I met him 30 years ago. We were both doing a martial art demonstration at a, at a martial art um, event, yeah. and uh, he was cool. He was impressive. He came in with his with his uh, outfit on. He broke six boards with this part of his fist, which was cool. And I came in with my street clothes and I broke three boards with my elbow, you know, <laughs> which is easy. You know, it's really easy. Um, but I accidentally called him in the stands. We were somebody introduced me to him. This was 30 years ago, and I don't know. I, I was confusing him with uh, Rolf Ralph Mueller, Mueller. And I said, "Hey, Rolf, not Dolph." I said, "Hey, Rolf, how you doing? Nice to meet you." And he looked at me like I was out of my freaking mind. <laughs> anyway, that was my only encounter. With Dolph. <laughs> so I need to when I uh, Rhode Island Comic Con, yeah, I want yeah. to go up to him, and, you know, without. You know, like I'm trying to kiss anything, but I just want to. I want to get. No, I like to. You know, in my age now, I like to set things straight. I don't care. I'm not. Yeah. I don't want anything in return. I just want to say, hey, Dolph, because I know he remembers that 30 years ago. I want to tell him two things. Number one, I apologize about calling you Rolf. <laughs> Still, <laughs> 30 years ago. <laughs> 30 years ago. And number two, uh, you know, I, I had to sign your autograph. <laughs> Anyway, that's going to be an interesting meeting, okay? If you could be there at Rhode Island Comic Con and, and be there for that encounter, that might be that might be cool. That's hilarious. Well, uh, we're, pre we're pretty much out of time, so let's just... Yeah, of course. You know what? Course. I'm sorry for making my answers. No, 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 I just can't help it. Yeah, yeah, we'll get these guys rapid fire and let's do it. You had the opportunity to work with Brian Blessed on Flash Gordon, um, yeah. and Brian's known for playing very over-the-top characters. I wondered if he was like that in real life. He's... What's your name? Chris. Chris, he's the real deal, man. You guys look a little bit like, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the but he's the real deal. Melody thinks thinks she, uh, he's wacko when he tells us that he, I mean, he's 81 now. Last year, he told us at 80 that he's an actual Russian cosmonaut. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's been nine months being trained up uh, for a civilian to fly to the space thing, right? And I and I, I just looked at him, you know, so yeah. right, you know, because I believe half of what he says. Sure enough, we Googled it. He is, he is. <laughs> he climbed Mount Mount Everest four times, but never made it to the top. I knew he did that yeah. because he said, you know, the first he got a call on a set, whatever, halfway up, <laughs> that his mom uh, was ill, and then something else happened. He got a cold, and the third thing, the fourth thing, you know. Hey, he's the he's the he's the showman, man. Very cool. He takes the room by storm. He's he's an incredible person. Go ahead. Yeah, an amazing actor. Hey. Hi, Sam. I'm Thomas. Uh, hey, Thomas. And you're right about theater noise. They, they, about they, the what? Theater noise. They sh what? They Come shouldn't. On. They shouldn't sell the paper bags. That's the worst part for the popcorn. Yeah, yeah. but it's usually a bucket. I thought. Even if it's a small, yeah, isn't it a bucket? Small ones, ones are paper. paper. Anyway, yeah, but they like to take those nails and. <laughs> you know, the bottom of the buckets too, right? <laughs> no, that's true. So, uh, last time I, I tell you, I did tell one person. I said, "Stop chewing and just swallow it all." <laughs> come on, come on, come on, man. So, uh, last yeah. time I saw you at the Dallas Comic Show, I hadn't actually seen Flash Gordon yet. I, Im immediately after, finally watched it, and it's one of those movies that I think I should have watched when I was growing yeah. up because it would have, yeah. like. I know that would have been a really nostalgic yeah, movie yeah. for me. And when my daughter gets a little bit older, I'll be sure to show yeah, her. It's corny as camp, but for me, yeah. seriously, it's, it's a vi visual masterpiece. Oh, yeah. Visual. Oh, yeah. 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 I it, mean, it, those it, costumes, do you know Max's costume weighed 60 pounds because of oh, each yeah. 35,000 sequin hand-sewn beads? You can't get that the way it pops off the, the camera and the lighting. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's unbelievable. And the sets, the way they were painted, oh, red, gold, black, silver. I mean, come on, man. I envy anyone who actually grew up watching that. I yeah. think I would have loved that growing up. Yeah. I, I think it's funnier now because you get all the innuendos that are hidden in the movie. That's that right. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting, yeah, I mean, there's some crazy scenes in there. I mean, the dialogue, you're right. Yeah. Go, yeah. Thanks, Tom. Young man, go ahead. Uh, my name's Michael. Uh, yeah. And uh, similar to him, I, I, growing up, I always heard Flash Gordon, you know, stupid, it's campy. And I was a Star Wars, Star Trek fan. Right. Um, and in college, a friend of mine was like, it's the greatest movie ever. When it came out on DVD, because I never saw it on VHS, right. saw it, loved it. It's yeah. brilliant in its own way. Yeah, it's not Star Wars, but it's so awesome. Cool. Thank and you. No, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be here talking to you now. I had, right. had it not been, been for Flash Gordon. Yeah, if you, when I first, whenever I see any of my films at a screening, I only watch them once, by the way. 
I get to see them more now because I get to do these private screenings with the fans. It's incredible. But I, I try to be objective. It's hard for me to be objective because I'm very hard on myself uh, mm -hmm. about anything. Um, but yeah, so when I first started to see it, I thought, wait a minute, am I supposed to laugh at that? Is that real? Are they making fun of it? Yeah. You know what? Enough of that uh, uh, brainstorming. Just, you know what? It's fun. When you watch a film like that, just sit back and enjoy the ride, man. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to learn to, to do with a lot of my work, actually. You know? <laughs> and also yeah. the ending with, yes. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you did a great job. That was a football move. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for yeah. being here. You heard it here first. Uh, be careful with your money and don't bring tinfoil to theaters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and Mike, too, thank you. Just to tell him, uh, I got a quick photo up. I think uh, uh, not, uh, I won't be the too long, but I think I'm leaving at 2.30 today oh, to, to catch a flight, which I, uh, if you know me and my character, I never leave uh, Comic-Con early. I'm usually the first to arrive, the, the, the last to stay, but I have to get back uh, for some family. Yeah, so go, uh, go check out so Sam yeah, at two, his table. 2.30 only, but a quick, I'm doing a quick photo up. I should be back at, uh, what time is it now? I should be back at 2.05 or 2.10. Okay. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. And thank you for my time. Yeah, no, thank you. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sam Jones, everybody. <laughs>